This episode of A Conversation with John Conenna is sponsored by Generate. In today's digital age, staying ahead means harnessing the power of generative AI. Wondering how your small or medium-sized business can join this revolution? Look no further than Generate, your strategic partner for integrating cutting-edge generative AI solutions. We create personalized plans, adapting existing AI technologies to fit your specific business needs. Plus, our expert team provides essential training, empowering you to make the most of these innovative technologies. Interested in transforming your business with AI? Reach out to us at generateteam at gmail.com. That's generate, G-E-N-E-R-A-I-T, team at gmail.com. And now, on with the episode. Good afternoon and welcome to another edition of A Conversation with John Canena. Today, it brings me great pleasure to bring in a gentleman that I've known for probably over about 30 years. Um, get to see him every once in a while, and it's maybe once or twice a year when I do see him, but it is really special for me because this gentleman has been like hockey directors for different places. Is In his 15th season, if he's going to correct me, as the Chicago Wolves goaltending coach, which uh, this is a position that I loved and I played, and... Um, Again, he is also the director of the Franklin Park Ice Arena, an arena where I started my roots in hockey when I played at Holy Cross. It brings me great pressure today to bring in the goaltending coach of the Chicago Wolves, Stan DeBicke. Stan, what's going on with you? It's been a while, but it's great to see you. And what's going on with you? Uh, doing good. A uh, little different. I started out at Franklin Park and I re actually retired from park districts, uh, was at a few different places, but as I'm back there now on my tail end just to help the new uh, young hockey directors there. So back home where I started, but uh, it's great to be back there. A lot of familiar faces still around and just enjoying the summer till we get ready for the wolf season here. Yeah, right. And if am I correct in saying, Stan, this is your 15th or 16th season now being the Wolves goaltending coach? Uh, going on year 16, actually. It's been 16? a long time. Yeah, long time. We're going to get into the cusp of this position because, of course, uh, you being a goaltender uh, and, of course, I being a, an ex-amateur goaltender. And I want to talk about the goaltending of the day and how it compares to the goaltending of yesteryear. How does it start for you with this passion, let's say, for the game of hockey and, of course, this position? Uh, I always loved playing hockey. Uh, where I grew up was like the Belmont Central area in Chicago. And uh, we used to have a park, Chopin Park, over there. And the school I went to was St. Ladislaus. But I used to watch hockey on TV. And uh, the teachers that were there created an intramural program and you couldn't play till like you were in fifth grade. And I always just used to watch the kids play. And then you just see them play the goalie mass and stuff. I'm like, that looks like a great position. I'm going to try playing it. And I was lucky enough. There's one guy there who was, uh, he played for Gordon tech, Steve Saveda. You might even know him. Yes. Remember the name. Yes. He just, he came out like the paint and mask, the good looking pads. And I'm like, oh. I want to be, I want to be that guy. And uh, I just started playing and like all the guys in the neighborhood, that's what we used to do. Uh, when my dad, you know, my dad back then we was alive. He, he'd make a net for us. You tell these stories to young guys. Now they're like, sure. That probably didn't happen, but made a net, put it on wheels, painted the red post. And we would just go play at the park. It was nothing really organized. You just go out there. You get a bunch of buddies together. And right. uh, that's how, that's how it started. Like in the neighborhoods. Stan, if I can just ask you, what what years are these when we talk about Chopin Park and Ladislaw? Like, uh, what year? Were, were these high school years or were they like? Oh, yeah, that was grammar school. My high school years, I was at Lane Tech. Okay. Uh, which I, Lane Tech, I went 77, 81. But uh, I remember like going to tryout. I was like, my dad took me to the park a few times to skate. I borrowed equipment from uh, Steve Saveda, went to Lane's tryout as a freshman. But playing those few years of street hockey, ended up going there, ended up making the varsity team. And I was just like, holy cow, this is unbelievable. Incredible, incredible. You know, the similar story for me, because I was in the school from 75 to 79. So we're pretty parallel when I went to yeah. Holy Cross. And that, I mean, just, I so you're really uh, touching me with this because it brings back 
those memories of now when I go past the park like Chopin or Shabona or anything around here, there right. is no ice. There is no thing. So that's touching for me to hear that from you. After high school and college, did you did you pursue it in college a little bit too? Did, uh, after Lane? Oh. Uh, when I went to Lane, I ended up playing a little junior hockey. It used to be for the Chicago Saints. But I was so adamant, like, I, I want to just try this. And, John, I think you know, we used to teach ourselves by watching guys on TV. Uh, that's how, like, you learned the position back then. But I'm like, I want to go do this. And I remember telling my dad, oh, please, let me go try playing. Uh, went to Hamilton, Ontario for a tryout. Near Toronto. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, uh, I walked in, I'm like, what did I get myself into? Like, I didn't realize how good good was till you get out there. You get out and they're there. like, you can stick around for a third goalie. But I wanted to keep on playing. I ended up, uh, the hockey news at the time, uh, I used to get it all the time at the drugstore. Yeah. I read an ad in the paper for a team in uh, Saddle Lake, Alberta. They were looking for a defenseman. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to try calling this. I want to really play somewhere. I called and the coach, I go, how's your goaltend? And he's like, well, it's really kind of suspect right now. <laughs> and I pay my own way. Can I come out there? I remember my dad came home from work. I said, dad, I could get a tryout, but I got to go to Edmonton, Alberta. Literally got me a ticket. <laughs> go, you know, wow. ended up, my mom was at work. She didn't speak to me for a while. Uh, missed my sister's wedding, but my dad's like, go do what you got to do. And I ended up, yeah. uh, going to a reservation, Saddle Lake, Alberta, two hours outside Edmonton there, was there for a week. And the guy's like, uh, you made a very tough decision for me. Um, you're going to be my goalie for the year. So I called oh, my wow. folks and I ended up playing there for a few years. Uh, had like the time of my life, uh, just learned a lot. The coach was so fair. Uh, I actually called him after we won the cup with the Wolves uh, a few years ago and uh it was just a different brand like you had the kids that were on the farms they just played they, they just, run, and i lived on an indian reservation so that was like a new culture for me sure. but uh remember it it was great and uh you know it just uh they let you follow your dream there a little bit as i could say really got a fair chance and it just led to good things Stan, would you consider this what you just told me about this team that you called up on and tried? Would you consider this the juniors of today? Uh, it was a junior B team, but it was like really yeah. good hockey. Yeah. Uh, pretty tough. Like the rules have changed so much. It's a little different brand of hockey back then. Obviously, a lot more fighting and stuff like that. But it was a great league. I mean, a lot of guys went on there, you know, to Canadian colleges. A lot of guys got called up to junior A teams. I got a few tryouts the year after, like with the Red Dare, Alberta, and uh, the Obama Hawks. So it's like a – it's a stepping stone for oh, yeah. some guys, depending wh where you want to go. But to me, it was great hockey, and I think I remember the only cost with it was uh, – as you get billeted by the team, I think it was uh, $160 to change the USA hockey card to a Canadian card. Oh, wow. But, but they tr they treated you great, and it was just – it was it, – it was, it was like I look back at that as just it was so wonderful for me. And we made a lot of friends, still keep in touch with guys from there. So it was awesome. And the coach coach was just phenomenal with me. You know, touching how you put it and everything else. The first question I want to ask to feed off that is this. When you got there, was this different, the competition of what you were seeing here in Illinois with the Chicago Saints? You, you, like you said, you found out what good went from very good to excellent, correct? Yes. It's like, you know, you, and then you start playing in the league, you hear the Canadian National Anthem, it's like, this is for real, you know, like you watch yeah. it. But uh, <laughs> it, it was, to me, it was, it was great. But the guys were like so good, you didn't think about it. Like, like to me, it was like, oh man, I'm still with my buddies in my neighborhood. But man, there were some tough kids out there. There were some great skaters. I had a great goal of, uh, uh, a native goaltending partner like just it was fun getting on the bus going places so it's like i'm like you know this is a lot different than back home you know walking yeah, through the right night. right i mean and the, the really i mean that i'm sure i'm sure and and not talking to you or just now those dreams and those memories never go away they never go away no it's uh you know what I kind of said it. I've always said it to goalies I teach and stuff and just in general. And it's like, uh, 
you learn so many things. Uh, you just learn so much about hockey. You learn so much about life. And then the big thing for me, all these years later, all the guys that come through the Wolves doors, so many guys from that area, they know exactly where it's at. You got a lot of Alberta guys. You got a lot of Manitoba guys. So it's just it's like, they're like, wow, you played out there when you were how old? And, uh, you know, you, 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 again, you, you see how many good athletes there are in other places, which you didn't, you don't really realize just in this area back then, you know? Exactly. No, exactly. You're just a real quick story. I got to tell you, I played at Loyola for two years here in the city and it was a club team under a guy named Jerry Pfeiffer. And I'll never forget my mom who couldn't speak English said, are you going to that Loyola try it? And my mom didn't know nothing about hockey and you just hit it on the head. She says, tomorrow, when you go to that tryout, this is not the Franklin Park Jets. This is a different world. <laughs> And when I walked in that locker room, I thought one guy broke my hand when he shook it. And then, of course, yeah. when he takes his first shot at me, it looked like a Bayer aspirin tablet instead of a puck. Yeah. And, and growing up, too, like playing at Lane, like we used to play at McFederate. So it's house league. It was, I think, 200 bucks a season. They split you up into six different teams. You're the Rangers. You're the Kings. But it was all, all guys who just loved hockey. And yeah. your parents dropped you off. It, there was no, like, drive around the roundabout. They let you go in the rink. They pick you up afterwards. Exactly. It's none of the stuff that we see now. Is my little Johnny going to make it? Why is there any? It, man, my, exactly the way you put it. My parents would drop me off and, you know, fend for yourself. Have a good time. We'll be back at two o'clock to pick you up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I like that. that no, go ahead. You, you, find, you find goalies to idolize. There's a goalie that played who actually plays in the skate that my buddies, that you played in a few weeks ago. My buddies yeah. all, Jimmy Gloa, 71 years old. He played for Circle like the opposite hand. I'm like, I used to watch him at Skokie and you just try to pattern yourself after guys you see that you look up to. Unbelievable. I remember seeing him uh, that night when, yeah. when I was out there. Yeah. So this ends for you, of course, we all, it all comes to that ending of the playing like that level to play at that level was fantastic for you. You still kept this passion to do what you're doing now. So what happens? I mean, uh, uh, with you with this you, you you still wanted to do the coaching and get involved in the game well when I was lucky like the rinks I played at you could clean the locker rooms for the guys who worked in the park districts and they let you get ice time but guys were really good to me and you know I went to you know Brockport State afterwards had a uh, tryout and uh, it was the Winston Carolina Thunderbirds at the, the one time yeah. and they did, but you come back home you know, and I was doing another job. He had a personal training gym. And then finally I got into the, somebody says, Hey, go, go try, you know, for a position at Franklin park. And you just want to start giving back and you kind of want to see what you correct, but like your, how can I say your moral compass of how you do things in the hockey world. You want to give every kid a chance to follow a dream sure. and just give them, the, give them the best path. And you, you surround yourself with good guys around you. And that's always a thing. It's not a one person thing. It's everybody that's in the building with you, but sure. I just kept on going. And then, uh, you know, years later down the road, uh, Kenny McCudden, who's, uh, he's a, you know, skills coach in uh, Washington assistant coach sure. there introduced me to Wendell, you know, did some goalie camps together. And that's how like the connection started where you just start teaching kids and you don't think, I didn't think much about it then just, you know, Hey, work in a few goalie camps and just keep on helping kids. So hopefully they could go play in high school or hopefully college. And, you know, their rare chance of you, if you're that good, somebody usually will find you. Sure. You know, follow, follow a pro dream. I always say chase your dreams, but, you know, just try to uh, try to go the highest you can go. Exactly. So is the Wendell thing basically maybe like the first thing that gets you going? Yeah, I mean, we talked goalie, and here, here I'm in awe of this guy. You know, oh, God, nice, right? Having him, you know, with all the the trophies he's won, and you know, obviously, you know, an unbelievable goaltender, and just the way he taught and the way he spoke to people, you wouldn't have think this is, a, you know, he, the success he had, you wouldn't know because he's such a normal guy. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Having him like as a as a, a mentor on the ice, you know, while you're teaching together, mm -hmm. it's it's a big thing and it just, it keeps you going and you learn new ways to deal with guys. And I, I think that's the biggest thing in hockey. And I've been very fortunate with the organizations we've been with too, uh, to have some great 
goalie goalie guys that have come from the NHL to help out, you know, help me out and sure. help me to learn the position, like Roland Melanson, uh, oh. Mike Rizzotti, who's in Vegas. And uh, I'm so fortunate with Jason Mazzotti with, with Carolina, just there's so much knowledge of the game and little, little details that God, I'm still at 60 years old. I'm still learning how to, you know, hopefully be a better goalie coach for the guys that come in with us. Sure. Unbelievable. And you know, when you mentioned, like we, we were talking about Wendell, uh, you know, a Pittsburgh, you know, with the Penguins, a Stanley Cup champion in the AHL sure. with the Wolves, uh, you know, the those IHL championships, those those first years with the Chicago Wolves and everything else. And then you talk about a guy, Melanson, who was uh, the ex-New York Islander, I think, too, uh, Roly Melanson. Yeah. I remember the, him as a goaltender, too. That was a question that you kind of beat me to the punch. Here, you're this goaltending coach now, of course. And, of course, this door with Wendell opens up this thing to be now the goaltending coach for the Chicago Wolves, correct? Yeah, I kind of had to slap myself a few times to even like realize where you're at. I remember going to Vancouver's training camp and, uh, you, you know, standing there in the middle of the rink. And I, I, I remember to this day, he looks at me, he goes, you're a professional goaltending coach. And I'm like, holy cow, this is really, you know, you get into hockey. I always like, oh, I'm going to play hockey for a long time. I'm going to turn I'm going to make it pro like everybody thinks they're going to do. But I'm like, wow, this is a, it became a reality for me. And uh, couldn't have been any happier, you know, and to to oh. keep on doing it, it's not even like work. I just, I love being around the guys and just the camaraderie and just, you know, watching teams and watching guys' careers go. I talked to all the goalies that I've had over the years and the success they've had. And it's, it, it's, it's huge. It's, it's super nice. And of course, not to keep focusing on Wendell here. He saw the passion. He saw that you love the position. He saw that you you you, you love the game. It's not like you had to bring in, let's say, a retired Corey Crawford. Let's say, you know, if Crawford was still in Chicago, using him as the example, we have a Stan Dubicki, and Stan Dubicki knows the position, just like the ex-Chicago Blackhawk, I think, who's still the goaltending coach for them. He played at that, the level of the NHL Jimmy Waite, I think it was. Uh, yeah. Yeah, there's a passion there. And of course, somebody like a Wendell Young didn't make a mistake if you're last in here 15 years. Um, question for you. Yes. You have seen in this path of 15 years, the veteran goaltender and that same gentleman who was like a Stan Dubicki when he went to Alberta, correct? You've seen the two different types. Is it hard to show the veteran goalie who might have played in the NHL, he was on the Nashville squad, and now he's been dropped down to the Chicago Wolves, or you see the kid coming out of college. Do you have to use a different approach with the veteran and the rookie? Well, I, it's a great question. And I was like thinking, because I was kind of nervous about, uh, you know, just doing the, this whole thing. And I'm thinking back to like the first goaltenders I had were uh, Manny Legacy. Who's a, he's a goalie coach for New Jersey Devils. Great career. Stanley Cup. I had, uh, and he was one of the first guys that when I went through the door, Pete Menino, Drew McIntyre. But I'm like, man, how do I talk to these guys? How do I, how do I approach them as a guy who I wasn't in the NHL? And I remember the first thing I did, I met Manny. I go, hey, Manny, I was the, you know, I'm the new goalie coach here. I go, what do you need to get yourself ready? And I remember his quote, he goes, you're the first guy who asked me what I need to get ready, not somebody telling them what to do. So I, I've used that with the goalies over all the years, whether it's like, you know, me and you playing, you have your routine, you you know what makes you feel good when you're getting in the net for the game and stuff. And right. that literally kept me going with all the guys because they all – they're all such talented athletes. You, you oh. know, you just get to be there to be confident with them and just what makes them tick. What do they feel good with? And then you add your own little touch in there and stuff like that. But I think when you build that camaraderie early to ask them what they need, it goes a long way. Stan, that question that you asked Legacy, of course, here's this guy who played for Detroit, if I, my memory serves me correctly. Yeah. Uh, that had to be the icebreaker for you in the sense of, wow, you know. He, he couldn't be any kinder, like, to me because, you know, again, I'm a new guy coming in. You know, you got some nerves. Like, how do you do this with a guy? What are you going to tell a guy who's played in the NHL? 
And, you know, just asking him the question, what do you need? It opened the door to communication. And I remember it to this day. Again, he couldn't be any more kinder to me when I was starting out in that position. And that's how a lot of the guys have been all the way through. Had Ante Ranta this year. Oh, wow. You watch this guy play so professional, such a nice guy. And the same thing. And, you know, like when you got these veteran guys come in, you got younger guys come in. You also had Keith and Kay here this year. You tell the young guys, hey, take a look at these guys because they've been doing it for a long time. And the game has changed while they played. But look what they do to prepare themselves. That's the best teacher. Exactly. And I mean, here's like another guy, like you said, Antti Ranta, who was basically up when um, with the Hawks during that 2013 run uh, before yeah. they traded him. So, again, you know, when you find that personality, it's got to really break the ice, you know, because that was always my fear, too. I coached Eddie Olchek's son at the Northwest Chargers, and he came out for a practice, and I was sweating in the locker room now because <laughs> I'm like, oh, my God, what am I doing out here if Olchek's out here? And he came up to me and goes, I like what you're showing him. I'm going to go work with the goalies. And I go, you're going to go work with the goalies? No, I go, I'm going to work with the goalies. He goes, no, I like what you're showing him. I'll work with the goalies. It broke the ice for me because – he didn't want to ruin my repertoire of showing what I was showing. Right. You always think you have to do something so extra special. And it's like the stuff you, you're doing works. It's worked for, it, it's worked with you when you coached. And it's, if you think you're doing the right thing, most of the times you really are, you know? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I got to ask you when a goaltender comes in, like now this season, whoever the goaltenders are going to be now for the Chicago Wolves, because, I mean, this is a great run you've had. I mean, to be, like I said earlier in this conversation, the goaltending coach for 50, going into your 16th season. You, of course, are watching this goaltender, how in practice and his, uh, uh, let's say, his uh, demeanor, his how he uh, functions to the game. You look at the strategy of this goaltender. Are you looking to change the style somewhat, or are we working in on the weaknesses and the strengths of the goaltender? I, you know what? It's uh, me and Jason Mazzotti always have this conversation too. It's like these guys have played a certain way for so long. And I think a lot of times every people want to come, you know, they want to come in and change, but man, they've got to this level because the way they played, and sure. you just try you just try to fine tune something like a guy coming from college to this level. It's a little different, you know, maybe a little different speed, you know, all your players in your lineup, but uh, like with the goaltenders, you don't want to train, try to change it too much, but it, it, if you could throw a little input and work with them to get like a happy medium, because a lot of these guys got goalie coaches back home and stuff too. So you don't, you don't want to go like, got it. You, you just want to be in unison with what's made them successful. Exactly. But Stan, like you'll see, like, say the night before that you guys lose, let's say you lose five to two and you see that maybe three or four of the goals uh, in your mind. OK, you know, you were off on your angle or uh, you're not doing this. You're you know, you're not covering up something. Uh, watch out what's going on behind the net, because the now the behind the net game becomes so critical to a goaltender. Right. Uh, back in my day, in your day, it was please stand up and quit watching Tony Esposito. You know, <laughs> you, know? You're, you know what that John? That's you're you're a hundred percent right. We were stand up goalies. Probably why we're still walking because we didn't do so many butterflies. <laughs> so we move okay, but yeah, a lot of the game is guys drop down so much. I get. I think the biggest thing with myself and uh, like when when I teach and stuff. It's patience. Like you, you got to learn how to play on your feet before you can play on the ground. I teach that to a lot of kids. Like there's times where you don't have to go down. So don't waste the energy to do that. Conserve your energy. So you're good from the start of the game all the way till the end. But it's like you said, reading situations, the play so fast now it's uh, it's, it's a patience thing. And I think, you know, again, you know, from you playing goalie all those years too, it's like, you really got to know who you're playing against and where everybody is. That's yes. the biggest thing. Know where everybody is on the ice because they could all fire the puck. They could all move, but it's how they set up. And you got to stay goalies. Don't get a, they don't have the luxury of taking a second off in a game because if it's in the back of the net, everybody's going to turn around and look at you anyways. Exactly. And you know, of course, being from that same era as you, I got the goofiest question of this interview, but I'm going to ask it to you. Sure. Being from that era that me and you were both uh, from when we saw in those days, the days of a 
Ken Dryden, who was a, basically that stand-up style goaltender. Uh, Tony Esposito, who was the flopper. Bernie Perrant, who took the lessons from the great Jacques Plante. Uh, he was more of like this mechanical goaltender. So to give you those three options, I have to ask this question. Could the goaltender of today, the goaltender that Stan Dubicki sees, play in that era? Uh, with, with, with the, without that equipment, but we're going to put the gold center of 2024 in 1973, but with Tony Esposito's equipment. Uh, I think it would be a culture shock to them because you know, and I know <laughs> when you had those dare pair, uh, the dare hair pads, that that's like a hundred extra pounds going in goal. And uh, I, that's the one big thing I see guys come in with the equipment. I'm like, Man, how would have I been with this? I might have looked better. I wonder if I would have been a lot quicker. But it, it's a culture shock with the equipment, you know. It's yeah. and if you put, like, if you gave Bobby Hall a wooden stick, I mean, a composite, you know, the oh my God. the guys have now. There'd be ambulances at every arena taking goalies out. Uh, you know? That is a great case in point by you because Hall with a wood stick was clocked at about 103 miles an hour with a wood stick. So can you imagine a composite? He would have been a Ferrari. You know, coming yeah. at you. Yeah, exactly. Oh, my God. It's so, it's so different. Like, when, when me and you played, you could go out and challenge guys. And then, you know, now <laughs> you go out there, I challenge guy, bottom of the face-off circle. He's walking around you because they're so fast. Yeah. And the, the rules have changed to defend so much, too. So, it's uh, it's it's weird. There are so many talented guys back then, and there's so many talented guys yeah. now. It's, I know it's, hard, it's to hard to compare eras, but you remember this better than anybody. There was the old GM-12 and the GM-3 catching glove. Right. It was like a first baseman's bit back in our day. Right, right. Now I see these gloves, and I feel like they're bushel baskets at Caputo's. Yeah. You know? they're, yeah. <laughs> they're huge. I've they're, yeah. done a few practices. Our guys have been sick over the years, and uh, I'd come up, you know, during a, do a practice with the Wolves, and it's like I'd come down at the bottom face-off circle. Everybody looks at you like, "What are you doing?" I go, "Oh, this is the way I used to play," <laughs> you know. But it's it's different. Your guys are in their creep a lot more, but uh, it's changing too. You got to be a little bit of both, you know. We yeah. had Peter who Carolina, you know, when he came in here a few years ago. First question I asked him was, "I go, who's your favorite goalie?" And he was like, "Dominic Hasek." I'm like, "This ought to be interesting because you thought it was going to be just a standard style of play now, sure. and here's." We did poke checks and two-legged slide, whatever it takes to stop the puck. Exactly. And that was the style, of course, of a Dominic Hasek. Yeah. I'll ask you two questions we, we, before we go into a little bit of a, a game I play with five questions, but I got two more questions for you. But I want to just stop this now to say that we are visiting with the Chicago Wolves goaltending coach, Stan Dubicki, uh, who's starting his 16th season. Stan has had an unbelievable career here in Illinois hockey, let alone here with the Chicago Wolves. And he's taken the time out today to visit with us. And we've touched on a few aspects here that uh, I've really enjoyed uh, this. 16 years. How do you... Do you pinch yourself sometimes to know that you are the Chicago, Stan Dubicki is the Chicago Wolves goaltending coach? Uh, every day, because my buddies that I play with give me a lot of crap. Like, can't <laughs> believe you're in charge, you know, but no. Uh, I, you know, I've, I got a lot of friends that are so supportive and stuff. And uh, a lot of past goalies, too, who I've talked to to, hey, what do you think? Did you watch a game? What did you see, too? Like, it's always good to get opinions from somebody <laughs> else. Exactly. It's, it's, like if you went to game and said, "Hey, I thought I, I'd be like John," you, you know, you, you're right because maybe I didn't see that. And oh, shoot, John, yeah, you, I you, you with me? You with me? I hear you. I hear you, and I see you. Don't worry, you're good. Okay. I'm you're just good. gonna get. Yeah, I hear you. Okay, hey, sorry. Good, yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I do. I do pinch myself. I, there's days I walk around like oh, I can't believe I'm still doing this, and. Wow. Usually, I mean, you know, guys get fired every few years. It's been a long run. Hopefully, it keeps on going that way. What a what a tribute to you, young man. I just want you to know that. Last well, thing, something has bothered me about the position, but not the position. Something bothers me about the game before we go and play our little game of five questions. I've seen this a few times now at the college level, and then I saw it last year with Connor Bedard. I want to know the opinion of the Stan Dubicki when this thing happens behind the net and they scoop mm. up this puck and jam it in the net. 
I feel, and tell me if I'm wrong, that is illegal. Because you're working on this as an individual, okay? You're working on this as an individual. This is kind of like a um, form of basically, uh, you know, expertise. I can't do it, but maybe a Connor Bedard can. But I think the goaltender, and tell me if I'm wrong, of nowadays should have some recourse on that, where if he's going to tuck it and he sees it coming, he should grab that stick. Is that allowable? <laughs> it's probably not it's not not allowable by the rules but you 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 brought up the million dollar question yeah that's a move where i it's if you go out if you're a goalie and you, you see it coming you try to hit that stick you'll get called for slashing or something uh and more more kids are trying to do it and everything I, yes. I don't i i wish there was a rule for that because it's like hey you can you can only go so far out of the crease before you get called for a penalty if you leave the trapezoid, but guys could do this where they do that move to turn around and it's right. I, and then people love seeing it. They're like, Oh my God, that's fantastic. But as a goalie, if you go out there and check the guy while he's doing it, then what, you know, <laughs> exactly. I, I just, you know, Stan, it's, it's hard enough now because after our era, like when Mr. Gretzky came into the game, he made the back of the net another form of an attack in hockey but you know sure. he, that was his office as they say and of course many people followed it but this trickery play now i think there should be some some kind of a communication for the goaltender to do this too i i mean there's got to be some uh, or do they you ever see them taking it away from the game no, but if me and you start a goalie school where we have a way to combat against it, we're going to be millionaires. Yeah, I know, right? I, I, Stan, put that in the back of your head. But, uh, but this yeah. has been a tremendous uh, question and answer, and I'm hoping we really could do a part two. But listen, I got five questions for you before I let you go because I know your time is valuable today. This has been fantastic. And I really want to do nope. another one with you because I can spend two hours with you just in what you have told me here today. Um, Absolutely. Absolutely. First question, besides maybe parents, mother, father, uh, whatever, have um, who was that early mentor that still stays in your head to this day that says, wow, that, you know, pushed you to be the goaltender that you were. And of course, now this goaltending coach. Uh, I, you know, I go back to my uh, days at, Grammar School at St. Ladislaus, uh, Steve Saveda, who was just, he was like one of my idols, like I idolized him. And the guy who gave me a chance in uh, Lane Tech was, uh, was a Chicago police officer for many years, Jim Farrar. He was the goalie coach. Oh, wow. Time. He's like, take a chance on this kid. And, uh, you know, guys like that, guys, you know, Jimmy Gloa. I had a few different goalie coaches. Bruno Braganiello played Chicago State. Vic Sinisi and uh, the guys. Oh, well, you're bringing them. back some great names. Great names. You're bringing back and, some uh, good ones. Yeah. Jack, yeah. Jack Stieslak, Mark Finley, and McFedrich. Uh, wow. You know, Mr. Casper. Those guys gave us the ice time and let oh, us yeah. play. And they shot on us. And it tremendous. just gave us, gave us the opportunity. And you probably know a lot of these guys. It yeah, tremendous. I mean, you're, you're giving me goosebumps. You're giving me goosebumps. Yeah. <laughs> Those guys had no egos, and it gave us the opportunity just to be sure. kids and play and get better. Without a doubt. All right. Second question of the five. What is that Stan Dubicki movie that he, that he could watch 200 times and not get bored? I'll give you one or two. We want to know more about Stan Dubicki here today. Uh, <laughs> Paul Blart, Mall Cop. Okay. Uh, and Grown Ups, which I probably see. I mean, there's oh, other yes. <laughs> But I, I want movies that make you feel good. And, and my wife, you know, she's like, I can't believe you're watching it for like the hundredth time. But those, they make me crack up. And the way the way things go in our world today, you got to laugh a lot more. So I really oh, love yeah. those. Especially what we're going through the, uh, since, since after COVID, right, Stan, for sure. Yeah. Question three, what's Stan's go-to meal that he, either his wife makes or what, or he says, Come on, honey, we're going out. What's the go-to meal or a restaurant that it's Stan DeBicke time and his wife and then whoever? Uh, well, now I got a little five-year-old and I got a twenty a five year old son and I got a 25-year-old daughter. So Chili's isn't a bad bet every time. Okay. And just sort of, 
in ordering pizza from Villanopoli. It's it's pretty good, pretty pretty good. You can't go wrong in Norwich with Mr. Pavone. Yeah, no, you yeah. can't go wrong in Norwich, right? That's a, yeah. a great pizzeria there in Norwich, Illinois, where I'm from. All right, yep. you've been part of Illinois hockey for a long time, a long time. I mean, you've been part of it. Besides the Chicago Wolves and all the things you've done, you've seen, you've coached at a lot of different levels. Besides yourself, can you name five top coaches in Illinois that leave a mark in your mind? Of you know, top five guys if you saw at the travel or the high school or whatever level, college, whatever. Oh, uh, God, there's a a coach that he he's on the ice with me a lot now in Franklin Park, Don Cesario. Uh, they call him Chez. He used to work uh, for the Hawks, like you know, doing the ice and stuff. He's one. He's one of the most just brains of hockey. Uh, that I've ever seen. Uh, Joe Schmeagel, who coached college hockey with myself. My God, there's so many guys out there. Uh, you brought up two good ones right away. Yeah. Uh, this this is just Illinois or even at the, the, the pro level guys I've met? Yeah, just or, Illinois, because I know you've been part of Illinois hockey for so long, but. Yeah, yeah Jack, yes, Jack Seaslack. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Adam McFedders. Mark, you know, the, the, those guys out of McFedders really gave me a good beginning childhood and a lot of us. And, uh, For sure. uh, my God, guys are going to get mad if I miss them. I'm trying to think. <laughs> don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> uh, blame it on, blame it on me, Stan. Yeah. I, I mean, Jesus, every, yep. every guy that had that work with me in Franklin Park, Tony Bertuka, Mike Schmeagel, Billy Thorne, all these guys and their coach and now still Rich Sokol, they, these guys are just tremendous, tremendous guys. guys. Oh God. Uh, just from Franklin Park alone. I mean, yeah, you said it. I mean, you brought, you brought up some great names. All right. Yes. I got to leave you with this. You are a goaltending coach. This is the last one. Now this would be on the professional level. A level since you okay. were this young gentleman to now, who are your top five goalies in the world? Ooh. Top five goalies in the, the world. world. Playing today and past that are just the past. Day. Yeah, when you were seven years old and to now. Well, uh well, I love Tony Esposito. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. I was a big, big Bernie Perrant fan. Oh god, what a goaltender. So those will be my old guys. Modern day, uh, I'm going to say I love Jordan Bennington because I had him here and his just personality, yeah. he's just a hilarious guy. And I just, you know, you know, him winning the cup was like, uh, it was great. And uh, I'm trying to think, who else am I going to put out there? What do I got? I got three there. You got three. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> And probably people, uh, my modern day guys too. Alex yeah, Wine. modern day, whatever you have been. Yeah, yeah no, I mean, uh, J Jake Ottinger from Dallas is an unbelievable oh, goalie. Yeah. And Bob Roski, those guys are fantastic, man. I mean, just oh, yeah. watching the playoffs, those – I'm trying to, like, combine a few guys there, but uh, there are so many good ones. And I've been fortunate with the Wolves to have some great guys. You know, Billy Huso oh, yeah, a lot. Yeah. I mean, and you've seen so many great goaltenders just in the Chicago Wolves, so I appreciate – those answers today from you listen i gotta leave you with this and i'm gonna let you go this is your time is valuable and i really appreciate you coming on here but i gotta tell you you are basically i mean the passion shows just in this interview today uh keep doing what you're doing uh stan because this is tremendous and it makes me very happy that i've known you all these years through my uh, uh stuff with illinois hockey and everything else but this has been a just a, a, a thrill for me to have you on. And I hope you get off to a great start with the Wolves again for that 16th season. And I thank you for today. Well, I appreciate you bringing me on. And I, I love talking like this. Anytime you want to do it, John, you just say the word. You got it. And listen, I want to do a part two to get more into that position. And maybe by that time, maybe we'll figure out how to stop that trick play. But I got to tell you, you have been a great institution for the Chicago Wolves, and I hope I see you out at the uh, uh, coming this um, fall. I hope to see you out at the All-State myself. Uh, be great, man. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you.
This will go out on YouTube and Spotify in the coming days. We are, have been visiting with Stan Debicki, the goaltending coach of the Chicago Wolves, and we truly appreciate him coming on. And everyone, have a good day. Thanks, John. Thank you, Ms. Dan. On sale now at Amazon.com and Barnes & Noble stores. The Twins, A Journey of a Lifetime. The brothers and authors, Tony and Carl Ruzica, take us through a journey of Chicago sports history and their memories of a bygone era. Purchase your copy today.